Hey guys, how's it going? Today's Sunday, April 19th, 2015. I had a subscriber make a suggestion that I add uh, some information about electronic components that I am installing in the van. And I thought that would be a good idea and maybe uh, potentially help somebody out that wants to do this for themselves. So here's the video. I made a list. And I'll be adding links to all these items to the bottom of this video. So you can just click on the link and go check it out. And it's quite a list. Maybe that's why I haven't done this in the past. But to start off with, uh, I have two 12-volt deep cycle batteries. Now these batteries I bought at AutoZone. I would not buy these batteries Again, if I didn't already have them, that's why I'm using them. I already had them in a camper that I had up on the up on the property. But anyhow, I would buy personally. I would buy two Trojan T105 deep cycle batteries, six volts, and wire them uh, in series. But anyway, I think those are just a better deep cycle battery than the ones that I am actually using but since I have them I'm going to use them um, and let me just say this too before I get too deep into this this is uh, this is my disclaimer I'm I'm not a professional I'm not an electrician I I am just an ordinary guy that has done a lot of internet research and these are the items I'm using it doesn't necessarily mean they're the best and it doesn't necessarily mean that they're correct so based on my own personal research over the past couple of years into solar and components and so on and so forth this is what I'm going with if you choose to use different items if you think the items that I've chosen are not good or there's a better way to do it more power to you I wouldn't doubt that that's the case I'm just telling you guys what I personally have used on my van so anyway those two deep cycle batteries bought those at AutoZone about a year ago they are 106 amp hours each so they're wired in parallel and that gives me 212 amp hours of battery capacity they're a dual purpose, so they're they're uh, cranking for starting, and they're also kind of a deep cycle. Like people will use those in their RVs or use them on a boat, electrical trolling motor type boat. <clears throat> and then uh, Bogar Engineering, go check out the website. Even if you don't intend on using this uh, solar charge controller and monitor. It's a great uh, website with lots and lots of information on charging batteries, solar power charging, solar uh, components, and so forth. I ran across it. I think the guy's name is... Uh, I can't remember. Handy Bob or something like that. I'll, I'll put the link down in the bottom of this video along with all the other links. Um, for some great information on charging batteries, solar power, and how to really maintain what you have. A lot of people believe that you need a lot more solar than what you actually need if you uh, just get a good charge on your batteries. Anyway, I bought the uh, I bought all this in a package. You can buy the components separately, but you can save a little bit of money if you buy it all as a as a complete package. So the first off is the TM2030RV monitor, and that's what gives me uh, a readout and the status of the batteries. It's uh, It comes in a couple different models, but I bought the RV version, which is kind of a smaller, more compact version. And they both, both of their versions do the same thing. It just depends on the, the size available for your mounting and how you want to put it in there. And then that coupled along with the Bogart Engineering SC2030 
30 amp PWM charge controller. And I understand it's a PWM. People think that there's a better thing out there, the MPPT chargers, which may be the case. But from what I've read and understand, the uh, PWM does just fine with a small solar system, which is what I consider mine to be. Uh, do some research on that. Make your selection based on what, what you read and understand. These two items together can give you charging capabilities equal to or greater than uh, an MPP charge controller system simply because the battery monitor talks to the charger and it tells it the status of the batteries and how much power was put in how much was taken out <coughs> excuse me and it adjusts your charge to the uh, to the best requirements for the for the batteries that you're using so do some research on that I believe personally that this is the best charging system that you can get for solar power. Uh, maybe I bought into all the hype and believed everything that I read, but I've, like I said, I've done a couple years research and, and personally this is what I think is the best, at least for my needs. Along with that, those two items, I bought a, a cable assembly that allows you to mount your monitor you can buy a 35 foot or a 50 foot honestly I don't remember what I bought I think I bought a 50 foot because I was originally going to put this in a in a fifth wheel camper but that cable uh, allows the monitor to monitor basically a uh, 500 amp 550 millivolt shunt and that's what does all the measuring measuring the current that goes in and out of your battery system and then a temperature sensor to go along with the solar charge controller the cool thing about this charge controller is you can adjust basically every aspect of it most solar charge controllers especially the cheap PWM models that you can get on eBay or something like that not saying that they don't work they do work but they're programmed for a wide variety of a general audience and very uh, non-adjustable. This particular system, you can adjust every single thing that it does. Um, four stages of charging. Most charge controllers are three stages and I won't get into the details on that. I'll let you do your own research. Anyhow, you can adjust the the charge controller <clears throat> to optimize optimize your batteries but this temperature sensor will help with that and it will adjust the charge current based on battery temperature and I do live in Colorado so cold temperatures in the winter time it'll bump up the voltage appropriate for what your batteries require anyway so that's the Bogart Engineering uh, Trimetric Battery Monitoring slash Charging System that I that I got and I'm using and installed in here. And then uh, solar stuff, the rest of these items basically all came off of Amazon.com. Renogy two-piece 100 watt monocrystalline solar panels. So 200 watts total. You can buy them separately, you can buy them in pairs, you can buy them in four, six, eight, what, depending on the wattage that you want. I figured that 200 watts would be, would be just fine for my system. You pretty much want to match your solar panel to your battery power, or to your battery uh, capacity. So I have 200, roughly 200 amps of capacity, so I want 200 watts of power. That's the way I understand it anyway. The solar panel mounting brackets that I used to uh, bolt the panels to the to the roof rack or to the yeah to the roof rack. Renogy branch connectors. Those are the two connectors that the panels are also wired in uh, in parallel, so it remains a 12 volt system. Renogy solar cable. I I personally used uh, 10 gauge wire from my panels to my charge controller and that's a big 
that's a big deal when it comes to solar. I see a lot of videos where people are using maybe 16 or 14 gauge wire and uh, running long lengths, but the lower your, your uh, amperage, actually the higher your amperage and lower your voltage is, the thicker cable you need for long runs. So bottom line is the uh, ultimate gauge is you don't want to have less than a 3% loss of power from the panels to the batteries. <clears throat> so I use 10 gauge wire. I'm running approximately maybe 12 amps max on a hot bright sunny day with direct sunlight on the panels and uh, with 10 gauge wire and a 10 foot run or just a little bit less than a 10 foot run I have uh, real close to about a 2 maybe just a little more 2% two, two loss so it's important if you're gonna spend the money on the panels don't cheap out on the wire make sure that you can deliver the the power from the panels to the batteries otherwise you've you've wasted money you need more panels and so on and so forth so 10 to get 10 gauge wire from the panels to the to the charge controller and then I have uh, two inline 10 gauge fuses where I can put a 15 amp fuse in there I put those on the positive side from the panels to the charge controller and then I also have about a four foot run from the charge controller to the batteries that's uh, eight gauge wire and that also has a 15 amp fuse on the positive side so everything is fused if something shorts or I have a problem hopefully I don't burn my van down or danger my family the ANL fuse holder has an 80 amp fuse that's coming off of the batteries and that feeds all of my power side of everything so that 80 amp fuse really is for your uh, power inverter and um, that's also dependent the size of that fuse is dependent upon the size of your loads and the, the size of the inverter I have a small inverter 750 watts so 80 amps I think will be sufficient there six-way circuit fuse box that allows me to have six circuits I showed a video of that the other day a uh, let's see blue C six gain grounding bus bar again a six circuit or a six lug bus bar for uh, centralizing all my grounding wires Cobra four gauge power inverter cable kit I bought that off of Amazon about 25 bucks I think it was it has uh, I think it's 10 foot both positive and negative four gauge wire and then it also comes with a, a 10 foot I think it's 10 foot um, 8 gauge grounding wire <clears throat> and again that's designed for your inverter but I use that 8 gauge wire to run from my charge controller to my solar panels and also to provide a ground it's not the most expensive best wire that you can buy I believe it is um, copper plated aluminum wire and it's it's cheap but for the lengths of the runs that I'm using I think it'll be more than sufficient you can buy 100% um, <clears throat> very good quality copper wire for like uh, welders and stuff like that and get a much higher quality wire but anyway this is what I went with and uh, it's reasonably priced I think for what you get just depends on on your needs and how how good a wire you need let's see what else LED single LED dome light fixtures the ones that I uh, installed on that that panel on the ceiling yesterday again got them off of Amazon I'm sure they come from China eight bucks a piece nine bucks a piece uh, five piece round rocker toggle switches off of Amazon five of them for five and a half bucks they are um, cheap just cheap switches but we'll see how they work I actually haven't got those installed yet 
I bought 20 foot of 10 gauge wire from an audio place online and I'm going to use that for running to my uh, 12 volt sockets to plug in chargers and uh, cell phone chargers and, and iPad chargers and that, that sort of thing. I expect those to pull three to five amps so I need some pretty good wire maybe 10 gauges overkill but uh, I'm using that Harbor Freight Tools 70 watt power 750 watt power inverter <clears throat> 45 bucks cheap stuff but the thing I like about that inverter depends on the power needs that you have but 750 watts I can run a small TV I can run pretty much anything that I intend to run in this van for uh, 110 needs or 120 volt needs that power inverter also has um, a USB port so I can charge cell phones and stuff off of that inverter the cool thing about that little inverter is it has a fan in it but if it's not drawing much power the fan doesn't run so it, it's uh, its power usage is minimal if you run a big inverter just powering the ver inverter itself is going to use up a, a considerable amount of power so you got to have a battery bank to back it up but I don't intend to have that huge of power needs I think this one will be fine we'll see how it works it was cheap if it craps out on me I'll toss it and buy a better quality one <laughs> and then the, the 16 gauge wire I'm running throughout the van actually 16 and 14 gauge just depending on what I'm wiring I have an old 50 foot extension cord that I bought many many years ago and the uh, I don't know I think the thing got hit with a lawnmower and got tore up so I just kept it and I've had it laying around for years I just stripped the wires out of the inside of that extension cord and I'm using that wire to wire the van it's uh, it's good wire and cheap wire is expensive but this is you know hey I had the thing laying around instead of tossing it in the trash I finally found a use for it so most of the wire <coughs> is coming off that extension cord to wire up all these lights and everything some of the wire I'm using uh, from the wire that I took out of the ceiling when I stripped out the inside of the van lots and lots of wire uh, was was in that wiring harness and again instead of just tossing that stuff since wire is expensive I just used it repurposed it and used it to wire up some of the stuff in the van so that pretty well wraps it up hopefully this will help I'll put all these links in the bottom of the video down below if you have questions like I said I'm not a professional I don't advise that you use all of these items they are not necessarily the best items but this is what I'm using and for me, it's working out really well. So <clears throat> make your own choice. Do your own research. If I can answer your questions, I will. I'll do the best that I can. And hopefully this will help somebody out out there. Thank you for the suggestion. This is a good idea. And um, hopefully somebody can use it. So hope you guys have a good day. Today here, it's uh, <clears throat> cold and windy and nasty. I probably will not get much work done on the van today. <clears throat> Just going to relax and prepare for back to the grind tomorrow. So hope you guys all have a good day, and we'll talk to you later.